Tonight we're going to continue in our coverage of the miracles of the revelatory ministry of the miracles. The miracles of Jesus tell us something, to reveal something to us. In Christ's miracles we see the nature of Christ. Jesus is, uh, is not just available to everybody. Uh -huh. He's available to everybody who wants it. It kind of shrinks down the possibilities. So just we should assure people if you don't want Jesus, well don't worry, he's not gonna force himself on you. He could. Oh yeah. Uh, but it wouldn't be a blessing. Right. See in the end he is <laughs> in the end he is gonna force himself on everybody who doesn't want him, but it was just you don't want this. No at all. But for those who do, you know, you may feel rather incompetent and insufficient and inadequate, but if you if you want what Jesus has, he'll give it to you. Amen. And that's the way he is. The nature of Christ, the nature of the devil or adversary. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> We've got to have some power outside ourselves. It's not enough just to have a lot of self-discipline and be able to kind of do what you should do. And this just really isn't adequate. Because you're dealing with an adversary that has taken down every person that's ever been born of woman except one. Yes, right. yeah. So in a case like that, there's no need to talk about human strength. I mean, this is a no-brainer. It really is. All have sinned and come, not came, Amen. come short of the glory of God. Now tonight we're going to deal with Christ's healing of a lunatic child. It's actually the records found in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. I'm going to read from Mark's account of it. It's Mark, the ninth chapter. I'm going to begin at verse 14. It's, uh, it's uh, well, it's worth listening to the details of this. This, this of course, is a very real event. Sometimes I think people read the Bible like it's fiction. They're so used to reading funny papers and comic books and things like that that they read the Bible without realizing this is, these are very real occasions. This is uh, Mark, the ninth chapter, beginning at verse 14. When he came... To his disciples, he saw a great multitude about them and scribes questioning with them. And straightway all the people, when they beheld him, were greatly amazed and running to him, saluted him. And he asked the scribes, What question ye with them? And one of the multitude answered and said, Master, I brought unto thee my son, mm -hmm. which has a dumb spirit. And whither wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him. And he foameth, what? gnasheth with his teeth, pineth away, bones and groans. And I spake to thy disciples that they should cast him out, and they could not. He answered him and said, O faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Bring him to me. <laughs> oh, you, you've got to get to the point where you won't go to anybody but Jesus. You've got to get to that point and he'll, he'll encourage you to do it. They brought him unto him and when he saw him, when Jesus saw him, straightway the Spirit tear him. And he fell on the ground, wallowing and foaming. This is why we got to Jesus. This, this could really be upsetting. Now I get the picture of Jesus. And he, Jesus, asked his father, How long is it ago since this came upon him? It just... This is our Lord. He can talk casually. You're falling to pieces and he just... And he said unto him, of a child, it's been a long time. 
Oft times he cast him into the fire <coughs> and into the waters to destroy him. Mm -hmm. Notice he hadn't destroyed him though. Mm -hmm. But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Jesus took the ball. He's going to pitch the ball right back to him. Jesus said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believe us. So we're not talking here about what I can do. Right. We're talking here about what you can do. Not some great work you're going to do. It's going to believe. Yes. Yeah, Can yeah. you believe? That's that's the point. Mm -hmm, that's right. <laughs> Straightway the father of the child cried out and said, Lord, with his tears, Lord, I believe. Mm -hmm. Like a midget belief, though, see. Help thou my unbelief. Uh -huh. <clears throat> when Jesus saw that the people came running together, Kind of, he'd, he'd been holding this conversation to kind of wait till the group got gathered together. When he saw them running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and in don't miss this one. And enter into him no more. Mm -hmm. And the spirit cried and rent him sore and came out of him, and he was as one dead. Insomuch that many said he is dead. But Jesus mm -hmm. took him by the hand and lifted him up and he arose. And when he was coming to the house, his disciples asked him privately, Why could not we cast him out? And he said unto them, this kind can come forth by nothing but by prayer and fasting. Well, that's quite a quite incident. You want to see it's more than a historical incident. You know, there's uh, this this really happened. Uh -huh. This boy was really thrown in fire, thrown into the water by this evil spirit. Uh -huh. Was in him, but he the devil couldn't kill him. Hmm. They just sense a child, so it's been going on a long time. This work is being set up for Jesus. I can tell you the devil can't take you out just by himself. That's right. Well, he didn't. Here we are. Here we are. <laughs> here we are tonight. You suppose we'd be here tonight if the devil had his way? No. But some of us have like fallen into fire and in the water. Some of us went through some pretty, pretty hard times. Now I want to look at this incident here. The uh, the background of it. Jesus had just come down to the Mount of Transfiguration. Whew, what been right? Whoo! Just been up on the Mount of Transfiguration. He glowed like the noonday sun. Amen. Moses and Elijah turned up. But the disciples were asleep. You know, you don't want to go to sleep and for you never know what's going to happen mm -hmm. when you're with Jesus. So when they woke up, there's Moses and Elijah talking to Jesus. They wanted to they build tents and stay up there. No, couldn't do that. So they just been up there, come down, and here's they come down the mountain, and here's this man with a with an oppressed son that a demon threw him in the fire and threw him in the water, and there must have been a dreadful. Dreadful thing. You can imagine what would happen if you had, you had a child, and every time he walked by a body of water, he jumped in and tried to drown himself. And every time he saw a fire, he jumped in and tried to say, "This is what we got here." Mm -hmm. But the devil hadn't been able to destroy this child. He must have been at it for some time. So if you think the devil's got power, he does, but not that much power. That's right. So now Jesus comes down from this mountain of transfiguration. And this. <laughs> Here's what he finds. See, you shouldn't be surprised if you had a great day of blessing and the things of God have been poured in your mind and the joy of the Lord has been in it and smack, oh, you run right into something that just tears you apart. You shouldn't be that surprised. Uh -huh. You aren't in heaven yet, you know. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Just in case something forgotten. 
Well, he came down the mountainside, Jesus did. He saw the multitude. There was a lot of people waiting for him down there. Interesting that none of them tried to go up there, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, there's some places God won't let the multitudes get in. You can get up high enough, you get away from mm -hmm. some of these people. <laughs> so he, uh, he came down. There was a, Matthew says there, there came a multitude. There they come, a multitude. Our text said he came to his disciples and the other nine that weren't. See, not everybody gets on top of the mountain. Even nine of the disciples didn't. Do uh -huh. right. so you think he just takes everybody to the same place all the time? Well, think again. Mm -hmm. They all didn't lean on Jesus' bosom either. Just one of them did. John. Yeah, that's amen. Just three of them went up the mount. Just three of them went into Gethsemane a little further. See? So there's a, there's a God has some favorites. He does. Amen. We're not all the same. Don't, don't launch out in life thinking you are that you're going to get the same blessing everybody else gets. Don't, don't think that. The main thing is to get one. Just get one. That's the main thing. Mark says when he came to his disciples and the scribes were questioning with them. Mark says so So the, the scribes, they got the nine that didn't get to go up the mount and they're asking them all kind of questions about the master. See, great blessings can be followed by the transfiguration by great challenges. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Boy, with the, the man whose son's jumping in the fire and the water whenever he walks by. Lofty experiences don't necessarily make one wise and powerful. Uh -huh. Peter, James, and John were up on the mountain, but they like they didn't get as much as they'd like to have got. And the other nine weren't even up on the mountain. Scribes questioned the disciples about this matter. When Jesus came down, he found the scribes questioning the nine that didn't get to go up the mountain. Yeah, I will tell you that. If you do get a chance to go higher with Jesus, you better be taking it because everybody Amen. doesn't get the chance. Amen. Mm -hmm. Amen. Yes. And when Jesus come down, Mark 9, 15 says, All the people when they beheld him were greatly amazed and running to him saluted him. We'd say greeted him. <laughs> you say, well, why don't people run to Jesus today? Because they don't know who he is. That's right. They knew who he was. They'd run, yes, they'd amen. run to him. Amen. Yeah, that's one of our jobs. Uh -huh. Don't you dare be a pretender and be in Christ. Uh -huh. You're like a big stone keeping people to come to Christ. Be yeah. real. Yeah. Be genuine uh -huh. in amen. Christ. And uh, maybe people see what's in you and they'll come running to Jesus too. And so the people ran to him. See, those who perceive Jesus, they still run to him. Amen. Ah, they still go yes, to him. Amen. So people aren't coming to him because they can't see him. Yes. But one of your roles as a child of God is to visualize Christ. Mm -hmm. Live him out so people can see who he really is and then those inclined to him will come. Matthew 17 says that uh, about this isn't it. There came a certain man to him kneeling down and saying you're going to ask about his son. So this man sought Jesus out. I do want to encourage you that you should be a master at searching Jesus out. Yes. yes. Don't be content to be off in a never-never land and not be conscious of Christ and not be aware of Him and not know His blessing and be ignorant of Him and be unlearned about Him. Don't, don't be content with that. Because uh -huh. if you are, you'll just stay right there and be like a dumb ox in the, right in the presence of Jesus. That's what you'll be. But uh, you won't be that if you press in. This Amen. man pressed in. See, Jesus, there was a crowd meeting Jesus. Uh -huh. This fellow had to bust out of the crowd to talk to Jesus. Yes, yes. And he did. He came to him. The man first, well, Jesus wasn't available. He was up on the mount. The man brought his son to Jesus' disciples. He told Jesus that Matthew 17 16, he says, I brought him to thy disciples, and they couldn't cure him. Mm -hmm. Well, if you can't, it's just good to admit it. Mm -hmm. huh? That's right. I've heard a lot of people say they can, and they can't. Mm -hmm. uh -huh, uh -huh. They just they brought him to them, and they tried 
Uh, Jesus had just set these men out. You got you don't want to overlook this. Yes, yes. In Matthew 10, he sent these 12 out, uh -huh. and they had did all kind of things. Yes. Uh -huh. In the name of the Lord. So they had some kingdom experience. Uh -huh. Yeah. They'd cast out devils and heal the sick and even raise the dead. But when this man came, <laughs> well, if you think kingdom power is automatic, you just are wrong. If you think you were really successful yesterday, so you're going to be today, you just have another thing coming. That's not the way this thing operates. You can be highly successful one day and a miserable failure the next. That's what, that's what happened here in this text. They couldn't help him. In fact, the man told Jesus this. Yes. Mark 9, 17. Hear this man talking to Jesus. Master, I brought unto thee my son, uh -huh. which has a dumb spirit. That is, he can't talk. And wheresoever he taketh him, he teareth him, and he foameth, gnasheth his teeth, and pineth away, or moans, and groans. Oh, must have been a terrible sight. Uh -huh. And I spake to thy disciples yes. that they should cast him out. Uh -huh. And they could not. <coughs> and if you can't, you just need to say, I can't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. I've heard a lot of people say they can and they couldn't. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There's no room for pretension in the kingdom of God. There isn't. If you can't, just say, I can't. Yeah. Just say it. In fact, the Lord may have you to live with a handicap for a long time. Mm -hmm. Jesus lived and died, and when he left, there's still a whole bunch of sick people in Jerusalem. That's right. Uh, people forget this. Uh, they forget this. Mm -hmm. There are still a whole lot of sick people in Bethsaida, Cap Capernaum, Nazareth, Bethlehem. There still were a lot there after he came and visited. If you think Jesus just kind of sweeps his hand over everybody and Everybody's wonderful when they've been in the place of Jesus. Well, you're just wrong, that's all. You're just wrong. This isn't the way he is. Uh -huh. If you've been blessed by Jesus, you better be given thanks. thanks. Not yes. everybody has. Yes. Yes. Not Amen. that way. Amen. Luke gives this account, Luke 9, 38. Master, I beseech thee, look upon my son, for he's my only child. Uh -huh. Oh, see, we didn't know that from the other. And lowest spirit taketh him, and suddenly he cries out, and it teareth him, and he foameth again, and bruising him hardly departs from him. See you? You kind of have to be a parent mm -hmm. to know this, but this this spirit beat up on this boy. Uh -huh. You might say, well, how could, why God let things like that happen? Well, into the wrong question. What do you mean, why does he let it happen? We're living in a fallen world and a fallen race, and Satan's the god of this world, and he's captured everybody in the world. We need a deliverer, not a bunch of stupid questions. Yes, yes. Amen. And so uh, he told it to Jesus. If you do have, <laughs> you should learn to tell Jesus the facts. Yes. Yes. Amen. yes. And to hope you're not one of those that he said, I brought him to your disciples, but <laughs> they couldn't do anything. But if that's the case, tell it. Yes. Tell it out. See, they, <laughs> these disciples have already been sent out once and had power. Yes, yes. But I'll tell you, because you got power today doesn't mean you're going to have power tomorrow. Mm -hmm. These disciples hadn't left Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's right. Since Matthew 10, seven chapters before that, they hadn't left Jesus. They hadn't backslid. Mm -hmm. They hadn't. Right. Jesus sent them out. They were casting out demons and healing the sick and raising the dead. And today they couldn't combine nine of them. Couldn't help this person. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so the kingdom of God is not like an automatic pilot. That's right. So you are really successful today. Doesn't mean you're really going to be tomorrow. Mm -hmm. That's not the kind of life we're living here. Brothers and sisters. He'd sent them out with power once. Well, Jesus answered this uh, answered this man. He said, I brought him to your disciples. Yes. Ooh. I kind of live in the 
hopes that nobody will say that about us or me. <laughs> we came. <laughs> we came to Brother Blakely, but he couldn't. He couldn't help us. Talking about seeking God we're talking about. Yes. You hope well, you don't want this to be said of you either. I brought him to your disciples. He, he couldn't do anything. My, what a... What a situ terrible situation. Mm -hmm. Jesus uh, answered him. He said, oh, oh, faithless and perverse. Perverse. Mm -hmm. That means messed up. Mm -hmm. Off kilter. Mm -hmm. Headed in the wrong direction. Mm -hmm. Don't have my blessing. Don't have my power. Pretending. Oh, perverse generation. How long shall I be with you? It's like almost like Jesus is anxious to get back to heaven and get out of this mess Amen. in this world. Mm -hmm. How long shall I suffer you? How long am I? You know, I don't want to be somebody Jesus just has to put up with. Yeah. But there's some people, I get the picture that Jesus is kind of like putting up with. Them. Like the, the, they ought to be glad they're not in hell today. Mm -hmm. There's some people like this. Oh, faithless generation. He's talking here to his, to the, to the disciples, mm -hmm. the nine that were left. Bring him hither to me. Mm -hmm. Mark says, he answered and said, Oh, faithless generation, how long shall I be with you? How long shall I suffer you? Mm -hmm. You're a pain. Mm -hmm. It's hard for me to bear you. Well, have you been, you've been around people like this, haven't you? Mm -hmm. In church, we're talking about. <clears throat> And I feel like shouting this out sometimes. How long do we have to put up with this? You know. I give thanks for you brothers and sisters. I do. You should too. Yes. Kindred spirits. Yes. Luke says, Jesus answers, Oh, faithless and perverse generation, how long shall I be with you and suffer you? Bring thy son hither. Thank God. Oh, this music. Bring him to me. Yes. Bring him to me. He was intolerant of their other unbelief, Jesus was. If he faced some with little faith, he told them, Oh ye of little faith, little faith. Jesus doesn't say, At least you believe, little. God's not glorified by little faith. Let me tell you. That's right. You can have a lot of faith. You don't have to Amen. have a little faith. Amen. Faith comes from God. It doesn't come from you pumping it up, you know. It's not the way it is. Matthew 16, 8 says, O ye of little faith, why reason ye among yourselves? Sometimes people talk about their <laughs> unbelief. Luke 24, 25, he talked to people that were so fools and slow of heart to believe. God's got a guy beat them on the head before they get it. Got to go through some hard trial for to get it. This, this isn't glorifying to God. It isn't. Be sensitive enough to God to recognize things right away and mm -hmm. confess if you be not just admit it. Mm -hmm. It'll glorify God and it will be inclined towards you. Make no mistake about it. As in the, the as in the, uh, this is something like the man coming to the Lord. Mark 9.20 tells us about it. They brought unto him, brought him unto him, and when he saw him straightway, the spirit tear him, and he fell down on the ground, wallowing and foaming. A man brought his, they brought him a man's son, and he, he had his worst attack when he came. Uh -huh. <laughs> How's that? Uh -huh. He had his worst attack when he, when he came. When he came to Jesus, he had his worst attack. Yes. How's that? <laughs> Threw him down. Thanks to this incident that we're, <laughs> What's happened this incident here? Mark records it. Mm -hmm. Threw him down. Luke 9, 42 says, While he was yet coming, the devil threw him down and tear him. He had a fit. And Jesus rebuked the unclean spirit and healed the child. So that's... Sometimes things get worse when you come to Jesus. <laughs> yes. now, the devil doesn't give up easy. Let's, no. Men may be quitters, but let me tell you, the devil is not. A quitter. Right? Yes. He's been at this now for at least six thousand years, a little over six thousand years, mm -hmm. 
And you've got to beat him into subjection. That's he doesn't right. quit. Mm -hmm. He had to be conquered. Mm -hmm. Uh huh. And even in a conquered state, he's causing a mess of trouble. Amen. Uh huh. Huh. After Jesus has soundly defeated him, he's he's still causing a lot of trouble. That's what he's in a weakened state where you should be thanking God you haven't faced him in a in his strong state. Mm -hmm. Amen. Like he was when Cain faced him. Uh huh. <laughs> be thankful for that. Uh huh. Satan does not yield easily. Mm -hmm. He doesn't. If you do, you'll lose. Mm -hmm. That's right. Don't make no mistake about this. If you if you give up quickly, you will just lose. Period. Satan does not. You fight the good fight of faith. Do so. Jesus, uh, sort of in a calm way, asked this. Uh, asked this. Now, how long? How long has he been in this state? <laughs> so, you think the man said, wait, 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 let's get on with this. Let's not be asking me this. How long, how long yeah. has he been in this state? Yeah. And he told him, well, it's been, it's been since he was a child. Uh -huh. And since he was a child, he's been in this state. See, Jesus still <laughs> has inquiries like this. Just imagine, now you're the father, an evil spirit comes on this boy and throws him in the fire or throws him in the water or he lays on the ground wallowing and foaming. It's all said. This is what this boy did. And calmly Jesus says, well, how long um, how long has he been like this? See? you got to know that Jesus is like this. Sometimes you're in a big fizz to get Jesus to do something and settle some difficulty you've got and resolve some problem that you've got and something you've been living with for a long time like this boy mm -hmm. have been living with this from a boy been living with this condition mm -hmm. but Jesus doesn't get all hyped up mm -hmm. you may be but he doesn't he may say about how long has he been like this so you have another one I, what I'm saying is you got to have your wits when you come to Jesus yeah. you have to have a presence of mind you can't be frantic enough uh-huh can't be like that. Besides that, Jesus had to give a little time for the people to come rally. How long has he been since it, this came upon him? How long has he been like this? His father said, of a child, since he was a child. Mm -hmm. So how long this was, I don't know, but a long time for a father to have to live with son in this kind of situation. But he made it to Jesus. If you can just make it to Jesus, yes. if you can just make it to him, it'll be all right. See, Satan didn't yield easily to this person either. Well, the boy says to Jesus, he says, oft times he casts him in the fire. Mm -hmm. And into the waters. To destroy him. Uh, but he hadn't had him, Since he was a child. This boy's jumping in fires and jumping in water. Mm -hmm. Hadn't destroyed him. He said, But if thou canst do anything, have compassion on us and help us. Mm -hmm. Jesus said unto them, Oh, no, well, no it's, it's not whether I can do anything. Uh -huh. This is in Mark 9 23. He said, If thou canst believe, Amen. Oh, all things are possible. So it's not, Can I do it? That's not. <laughs> That's the wrong question. If you if you come to Jesus saying, Lord, if you can do it, you ask the wrong question. Is can you believe? That's the question. How long? Jesus responded concerning his faith. He said unto him, If thou canst believe, all things are possible to him that believes. Now he didn't say nothing's possible to him that doesn't, but that is the way it is. If you don't believe, the spigot turns off. That's it. No need to go any further. If just looking for Christ to get you out of trouble, make you feel good, spigot goes off. Mm -hmm. That's not what this is all about. <coughs> this is not all about you getting better. That's not what this is about. This is about God getting glory. Amen. Amen. This is about people seeing who God is, not seeing who you are. Yes. See? And so then he's bringing this person, this man, this father, to a point where Christ is really the main thing in the whole, this whole thing. Christ is the main thing. It isn't whether he can do it or not. That's not the question at all. 
It's not what he can do, it's just what we will do. That's the issue. John eleven twenty six says, Whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Believest thou this? You believe this? Amen. John eleven forty said, Said I not unto thee, if thou wouldst believe, thou wouldst see the glory of God. Do you believe? John fourteen ten says, Believest thou not? That I am in the Father, the Father is in me. See, the issue is whether we believe or not. That's the issue. Yes. There's no question about what faith does. Uh -huh. There's no question about this. It's do you have it? That's the issue. So Jesus, uh, then at this time, he sees the multitude, they're running to him. So he's, he's kind of been uh, a holy stall here. Because he does his works, see... You're important to Jesus, but not that important. You really like aren't the main person. Right. He has an interest of the other people too. Mm -hmm. See, he holds this little dialogue with his father until the people uh -huh. Uh -huh. get there, so that they know about yeah. him too. See. So Jesus in Mark 9:25 says Jesus saw that the people came running together. <laughs> He rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Amen. <laughs> so, oh, Amen. God, huh? That's a, you might, some might call it the second blessing. It's one thing to be relieved, it's another yes. thing to be permanently relieved. Yes, that's Amen. another thing. Yeah. Well, that's the, that's the situation before us, and now let's take a look at this, what happens when he healed him. Matthew tells us that Jesus rebuked the devil or the demon. And he, he Matthew gives us kind of an abbreviated account. Matthew 17, 18. Jesus rebuked the devil and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. He just kind of sums it up in a single sentence. Mark 9, 25. Jesus saw that the people came running together. The audience was gathered. He rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him, and enter no more into him. Yes. Oh, he goes to oh, I thank God for those words. Amen. Yes. You want to learn to live with temporary relief? No. Jesus isn't like delivering antacid. Uh-huh. what he's doing, you can be delivered from the clutches of the devil. Praise, Praise God. God. Amen. Jesus uh, rebuked the demon. Matthew 17 tells us that. Matthew 17 18. That he rebuked the demon and he departed out of him and the child was cured from that very hour. And came out of him and he was as one dead. It looked like he died. Ah, it looked like he died. Just a lifeless carcass laying on the ground. Now the devil doesn't give up easy even at the word of Jesus. <laughs> much less yours. Yes. I've heard people pretending they got a whole bunch of power and they were rebuking the devil and shouting out at him. And sometimes I think the devil must sneer at you. No, who are you? Who are you? Remember that uh, Sons of Sceva? Uh -huh. They had the formula. Some been passing out a pamphlet about how to cast out demons. Huh? And so they came to this uh, boy, they called, called out the name over him. This, this child, the demon leaped on him and stripped him of their clothes and they ran away naked. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you better not be fooling around with someone you got that you have less power than they do. That's right. Mm -hmm. Better make sure you have the power. <laughs> the disciples, of course, they say they had tried to cast him out uh -huh. and they couldn't. Because of their unbelief, Jesus told them. Don't experiment when you're in the kingdom of God. Don't experiment. If you can't do something, just tell them I can't do it. Just tell God you can't do it. Just fess up. I've been in a lot of pretentious church services, let me tell you. Where people just pretend and they shout. They figure if they shout a little louder, something will happen. Or, few more of them gather together, something will happen, but it's just good to say, Lord, we don't have the power. Just good to just shell down the corner and admit the case. Amen. 
Well, when Jesus called this spirit out of this out of this child, what happened was that the, the boy convulsed, and and the spirit tore him. Said tear him, and convulsed him one more time. Mark gives that a gives that account. Mark nine twenty six. He tear him, convulsed him. My, what a terrible sight that must have been. Mark 9, 26 says, He was as one dead, insomuch that many said, He's dead. He's dead. Maybe you've never seen somebody like this, huh? Someone who, uh, before they were delivered, it looked like they were dead. Devil's not a quitter. If you think he is, you just got another thing coming. If you think you can just call out some magical word and the devil runs away, you just got another thing coming. This is the Son of God we're dealing with here. Uh -huh. Before he came out, this old demon just ripped this young man a good one. So he looked like he was just dead. There he is. Looked dead on the ground. People who flirt with the devil don't realize. He's in a defeated state, and that's still how much power he's got. Now he's got this kind of power. If you get down in a low enough zone, you've got to get up into the zone where Jesus is. Amen. Yes. You get down close to the earth, and it gets kind of scary sometimes. So the demon, the scripture says, convulsed the boy one more time. Looked like he was dead, and then finally the, the demon left. Must have been a must have been a relief when he did. But the boy appeared dead. Looked like he died. I don't know how long this looked this way. Mm -hmm. See, God will test your faith. Mm -hmm. Sometimes it looks like there's nothing more can be done. Mm -hmm. And I've been, I've been here where I'm talking about. I've been here where it looked like it's hopeless. See, that's a test of your faith. Mm -hmm. Don't... See, there are people, there, there are people that they learn this now from other religious people. They learn to gripe and complain and question and doubt. And they don't, when you're having a hard time, you've got to concentrate on believing. You can't concentrate on questioning. Yeah. You can't concentrate on trying to figure out why things aren't better. Mm -hmm. It's not a waste of your time. You've got to focus your attention on believing mm -hmm. and trusting. See, there's no question about what God can do, is yes. there? If there's a question in your mind about what God can do, you need to forget about the problem and start thinking about God mm -hmm. and who He really is and Christ and who He really is. Yep. Some people are distracted by situations and circumstances. Mm -hmm. But the boy, <laughs> the demon left him, but the boy looked like he was dead. <laughs> My goodness. He was as one dead. That's what it said. I suppose his father felt. Huh? He brought him nigh, looks like he's dead, lifeless carcass. You don't trifle with powers of darkness. If you think Satan gives up easily, sing a little ditty, you know, sing a little chorus, something like this. If you think that Satan quits easily, see, you just have another thing coming. He doesn't. Not at all. Don't trifle with powers of darkness. They actually didn't harm the boy, but it looked like, see. Looked like they might have killed him, but they really hadn't harmed him. Mm -hmm. Not at all. Mark 9, 27 says, Jesus took the boy by the hand, mm -hmm. lifted him up. Oh, what a sight it must have been. Yeah. Amen. If Jesus had to take him by the hand, I don't know if he'd ever got up. Yeah. <coughs> you had to believe this, see? You've got to believe that Jesus can lift people up even when they look dead. Amen. You've got to believe that. Amen. He lifted him up. Luke 9, 42 says he delivered the boy to his father. Here he is. Oh, what a happy day. Yeah. It must have been. Well, <coughs> there's the event. What happened? What happened after this? Well, first off, the people were all amazed. <sighs> Boy, pe people are amazed when something actually happens in church. This <laughs> it is kind of amazing, huh? People were all amazed at the mighty power of God. They all kind of sensed what caused the problem, the devil. Now they knew about the power of God. Amen. See, this amazement factor, however, 
This, it's not a good thing to be amazed. Because that's a sign of unbelief. Mm -hmm. um, it's unbelief that is amazed. Not faith. Uh -huh. So if you say, whew, I never had any idea God could do something like that. Well, you're not about to get much more, let me tell you. <laughs> that's right. You really aren't. People were all amazed because they were lack, they were not acquainted with this kind of power mm -hmm. at all. Then Jesus speaks to his disciples. <laughs> Here's what the scripture says, Luke 9, 43. While they wondered, every one, at all the things which Jesus did. Jesus died. He just turns away from the multitude. This is Luke 9, 43. He said to his disciples, <clears throat> Let these sayings sink down into your ears. For the Son of Man should be delivered into the hands of men, but they understood not the same, for it was hid from them, that they perceived not. And they feared to ask him of that saying. What? He just healed this boy, and Jesus is talking about his death? What? But this is the real Jesus we're dealing with here. Yes, amen. If you think Jesus is more interested in you than he is in himself and his... Well, you just have another thing coming. Mm -hmm. You really aren't the main person. Mm -hmm. He does love you and he cares for you and wants to help you, but you've got to get out of your mind that you're the main person and, and that everything in heaven focuses around you. Right. That isn't the way it is. Yeah. Amen. If you're just honest, your, your life will testify this to you. That you've been through a lot of fire and water, a lot of difficulty, a lot of disappointments, a lot of things you couldn't do. Well, this, this is because you're not God. Yeah. And you're not his son. Uh -huh. And the kingdom of God doesn't revolve around you. Uh -huh. He has a glorious destiny when you're not going to have any trouble. But yes. until you get there, you are going to have trouble. Uh -huh. And at some point, you got to learn how to handle it. Amen. This man knew how to handle it. i got to take it to Jesus. Amen. And even then, it looked like Jesus killed the boy. <laughs> it looked like he killed the boy. But he really didn't. You got to stay long enough to see what really happened mm -hmm. yes. when he works. Yes. Jesus, uh, then he, as I say, he spoke to the disciples about let this saying sink down into your ears that this child here was in the hands of the devil. Mm -hmm. right. I'm going to be delivered into the hands of men, and men can be pretty mean too. Mm -hmm. <laughs> And you see what they did to Jesus. Yeah. Beat him till his flesh is in ribbons and he didn't appear as a man. Isaiah said he was as no man. He didn't even look like a human being. He was so pummeled and whipped and beaten. Yeah, you... You need to know what can happen to a person outside of Christ and even when you're in Christ, what can mm -hmm. happen? Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Well, the disciples a little bit later asked Jesus about this because they tried to cast this demon out of this boy that threw this boy in the fire and water mm -hmm. and they couldn't and they asked Jesus about it why they couldn't and Jesus explained to them about it. He said, because of your unbelief. Mm -hmm. he, Jesus is going to be honest with you. If you linger long enough, he'll, he'll put his finger on the problem. The question isn't about me, uh -huh, Jesus uh -huh, is saying. Uh -huh. This isn't about me, it's about you. Yes. Because of your unbelief. That's why you couldn't. Well, then what ought you to strengthen? What should you try, what should you try and strengthen? It should be your faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. If this happens because of unbelief, strengthen. Strengthen that faith. Because of your unbelief, that's why you couldn't do it. Mark 9, 25 says, When Jesus saw that people came running together, he rebuked the foul spirit, saying unto him, Thou dumb and deaf spirit, I charge thee, come out of him and enter no more into him. Yes. <laughs> I've been around long enough to see people that had chronic problems with demons. You have repeat, repeat. Well, whatever happened, I think what happened, Satan, he's shrewd, you know. Satan is not... An idiot. He really isn't. Mm -hmm. I think sometimes Satan just kind of plays dead. He's kind of plays dead and resurfaces once in a while. Mm -hmm. Then people are thinking, well, Jesus cast him out. 
he'll, he'll cast them out again. Jesus does one casting out. That's it. Yeah. No more. Mm -hmm. When Jesus expels the devil, he is expelled. Amen. That's the way it Amen. is. Amen. The disciples said, why couldn't we do this? And Jesus is right up front. Now, if you really are honest with Jesus and you want to know real answers, he'll tell you. He said, well, it is because of your unbelief. That's why. That's why you couldn't do it. He speaks with candor to them. He says, this kind comes not up but by prayer and fasting. That's Matthew 17, 21. Only by prayer and fasting. So there's no automatic thing. There's no automatic thing. There's not a school like on how to do this. <laughs> there is. It's according to your faith. It's how tightly you're knit with Christ. See. How, how close are you in Christ, like really? What tells the story? What tells the story when you come into Satan's citadel where he has the power? Now that's going to tell you how close you really are. And if you're not close, you need, you need to get close. Yes. That, that's yes. what you need to do. You need to see the answers in the getting close. Amen. Amen. Because they asked him, they said, why couldn't we cast him out? Mm -hmm. They'd been trying. <laughs> they gave it a try. Remember, they cast out demons in Matthew 10. They cast out demons. Maybe they tried, in the name of Jesus, you know, whatever. Tried to cast, why couldn't we cast him out? He said, well, because of your unbelief. You're not as close as you thought you were. Not at all. And we learn also from this. <laughs> He said, this kind comes out out but by prayer and fasting. You, you have to be tuned in more to yes, God than yes. you are to the earth. Yes, amen. Now, if you can receive this, more to God than amen. you are to the church or those that say to the church. You have to be tuned in to Him. Yes, amen. He said, this kind comes not out but by prayer and fasting. So there's certain kinds of evil that you can't confront casually. I'm not sure yes. you can really confront any evil casually, but That's right. I'm saying there's some worse than others. That's right. There's just like there's some saints stronger than others, there's some demons stronger than others. And you just it's not a formula. That's right, that's right. Some people you might lay your hands on them and it's expelled. Others that more come. Uh-huh. Huh? Uh-huh. That's a, yeah, you you've got to know this. Amen. Some demons are worse than others. Uh -huh. They really are. John 4 12. <laughs> Matthew 12, 45 tells you that. It said that a, a demon was cast out of a man and he went out and got seven other demons worse than himself. Yeah. Ah, so well, there's some demons that are worse. Uh-huh, uh-huh. I, I don't want anything to do with them at all. Well, let's draw some, uh, some conclusions from this. It's quite marvelous. When you do have difficulties, you do need to bring them to Christ. Yes. Amen. First, this man brought them to Christ's disciples. They, they couldn't do anything. Uh -huh. Well, we, we have to admit to you that we don't have the answers for everything. That's right. We can only give you what we got. Yeah. That's all. That's all. That's all you can give, too. You can only give what you have. That's uh -huh. all. Amen. <coughs> Incidentally, in this incident, Peter, James, and John, who were on the Mount of Transfiguration, got the big blessing. They didn't say, hold on, hold on, we can handle this. We, we can handle this. You may even have been up on the mountain, but there's some things mm -hmm. that Jesus has to personally do. Yes. Amen. He just doesn't do it through somebody else. He's yeah. got to personally do it. Mm -hmm. Amen. Maybe, maybe that's why some things don't work. Maybe that's why some remedies don't work. Maybe that's why some prayers don't seem to work. Mm -hmm. There's some things you just have to have personal contact with the Savior himself. It's, it's like Satan won't yield to anybody else. There's some cases like he just won't yield the disciples and call over him the name of the Lord. Huh? And the demon just stays. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Takes the personal touch. That's why it's so important that the church acquaint people with Christ. Amen. Mm -hmm. I am yes. amazed that professing Christians how ignorant they are of Christ. Mm -hmm and what he's like, and what he does, and what he says, and how he reacts. You want to be acquainted yes. with Christ. Sometimes the followers of Christ can't really help us. Here's an example. Uh -huh. you, have to have the, you have to have the personal contact with the master himself. And there's other people Satan doesn't leave easily. Some of us have had children that 
See, we have a lot of children. I have ten children. See, but there's uh, a lot of children aren't doesn't necessarily mean a lot of blessings. Mm -hmm. Sometimes there's, there's hard cases. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. This boy was a hard case. Yes. There's a lot of children in Palestine. This was a very hard case. Mm -hmm. Now maybe you've had a hard case like this. You need to you need to be aware that this is no problem for Christ. Right. But it may be for the rest of us. Mm -hmm. We may not be able to help you. That's right. Mm -hmm. He will may want to help you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You're like the disciples, they tried to help this man. They just yes. they couldn't. Right. No, no, you just had to have a personal contact with Christ. Mm -hmm. The best thing, bring the person to Christ and let him do it. Yeah. Amen. You can't. See, Satan doesn't give up easily. Mm -hmm. You may be in a person's army and say, give up, I quit, I quit. <laughs> this is not Satan. Yeah. He's had success with every person that's ever been born except Jesus. Mm -hmm. That's how the successful he is. There's never been a person born beside Jesus that Satan did not dominate. Yeah. that didn't have to be delivered yeah. Amen. have to be saved mm -hmm. out of whom Satan had to be expelled by Christ he said humanity is not all that powerful if you put all your all your trust in men well you made a big mistake yeah. Satan's conquered the whole race mm -hmm. he has and the last efforts of a fleeing demon <laughs> doesn't harm the person yeah now one text says that the demon tore. I'm not sure all that's involved there. It must have been like a gigantic convulsion of some sort. But before this demon left, he tore the child. But he didn't hurt him. Amen. He didn't hurt him. <laughs> Sometimes Satan, he doesn't give up easily. That's why you, you, you can't afford not to live by faith. Yeah. This is the victory mm -hmm. that overcomes the world, even our faith. Not our words, our faith. Amen. Not our church, our faith. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Not our position, our faith. Mm -hmm. Amen. He will yield to that, but he won't yield to anything else. And the last efforts of a fleeing demon doesn't harm the victim. How about that? Yeah, it says he tear him. I'm not all <laughs> sure what all is involved there, but... He must have convulsed, like some gigantic convulsion, but it, it didn't hurt him. It is possible for deliverance at the first to look like defeat. Uh -huh. right. Right. Look, look like the boy died. Mm -hmm. What did he look like? My appearance, he look, he's dead. I could just hear someone from the first church of the Frigidaire. Yeah. Well, at least he's free now. <laughs> And sometimes the answer to your to your prayer to be whole. Mm -hmm. And believe me when I tell you physical physical ailments are not the worst ailments. Yes. Right. Everybody's going to be free to last from them. Yes. Uh -huh. But you can't you can't like make too much out of them. Mm -hmm. Jesus may ask you to live with one like he did Paul. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. So lest you be exalted above due man. Yes. Mm -hmm. That kind of tells you how much how much grace Paul had. Yeah, exactly. He had to handicap him. Mm -hmm. Lest he be exalted <laughs> yes. above due man. Yes. Like Jacob, he had to halt after he wrestled with him. Uh -huh. Ah, uh -huh. he had to go limping the rest of his life. Uh -huh. You may have to do the same. Mm -hmm. To get what you want from God, you may have to limp yeah. the rest of your life. Mm -hmm. But it's worth it. Amen. Amen. I'd rather limp with the blessed than run without one. Yeah. Amen. Amen. But we're powerless in kingdom matters. We need to know why. Because of your unbelief. See, that's, that's just uh -huh. the bottom line. But that's not the end of the matter. Uh -huh. You want to bring it. Bring it to Christ. Yes. Bring it to Him. Well, there's a... Here's one of these marvelous instances of Scripture, very personal, a very real father, very real son, mm -hmm. very real heartache, very real oppression. Mm -hmm. devil was real, but the solution had to be real. He couldn't pretend, yeah. couldn't pretend he's well when he isn't. Mm -hmm. They say, well, at least it's been, been two days since he had a seizure. Hallelujah. You know, well, this father wasn't content with that. That's right. 
Indeed. And there's sometimes the disciples of Christ can't really give you that full answer. Mm -hmm. The best they can do is take you who, to who's got the answer. Amen. Amen. Which is the Lord Jesus. And I commit it to you for your, for your meditation that uh, it's possible when Jesus is in your area to still have a lot of real problems. Mm -hmm. This is possible. Don't think that when Jesus moves in, the devil moves up. Of the region. That's not the way it is. But he will stick with Jesus. Yes. Now, I, when you, wherever Jesus was, there was a crowd. So it took something for this man to get through this, yeah. mm -hmm. through this uh -huh. crowd to Jesus. But if you can get through to Jesus, and sometimes you're going to have to... It's hard to get through some of the church. It's yeah. like, it's like, a, like a bunch of stones standing in the way. But if you can get through to him... You'll leave with a blessing.